Hey, Michelle back. So I just want to go ahead and share some personal stuff while I'm thinking about it. Because, uh, yeah, my mind goes and goes and goes with a lot of ideas and thoughts. And that's fantastic, you know, because, um, you know, it, it allows for possibilities. It, it allows to, you know, expand the thought into to realms you, you probably would have never imagined, you know, if you have, hadn't done it. Uh, the sun is in my eye, but I'm good. I'm good. Just want to make sure I can see. It doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to even see me. You know, I'm pretty and cute and everything else. So yeah, I don't need to, you don't need to see my face all the time or in clear sight. But anyway, um, before my dad died, I used to ask him a lot of questions. My dad was brilliant. Okay. And he had a lot of health issues. Okay. A lot of health, health issues. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the job he was in and, you know, his habit. He loved to drink. He loved to drink and he loved to hang out in bars and, you know, he worked hard and then he, you know, he went out and, and as they say, played hard you know, enjoyed the moments as best he can. But he did have a lot of health challenges, but you would have never known. And if you were, if he, but if you were paying attention like I was, then you knew. And I, I was paying attention all the time and I can tell the gradual decline of his health. But his memory was quite excellent, actually. Because I used to ask a lot of questions to him, you know, because there's a cause and effect for everything. I keep saying that. There's no such thing as a, no such thing as a coincidence or coincidences. And so, so many people go around with these misconceptions and assumptions about that black people or more so people of color didn't care about their communities or they don't care about their communities or that black women don't care about their children or care about their community or their which is all a bunch of bullshit and a bunch of lies that has been spread along the way for as long as I've been living. And I think that's why um, there's there's these attempts to ban these certain books, you know, the, the ban certain books about the black American experience, uh, the indigenous experience, you know, the alternative lifestyle experience. There's an attempt to, you know, erode those books you know, ban those books and, and take them to parts, to parts unknown, you know, po possibly to destroy them, of course. But again, you can't destroy everything. Everything is stored in the storage banks. And that that's going to take ye thousands of years, unfortunately, for people to understand that and understand why we are reaping what we've sown, you know, why we reap what we have sown and why there is a cause and effect. What has nothing to do with positive or negative of, of our feelings and emotions or positive or left or right of our personal opinions, you know, whether they're religious or political. Okay. It has nothing to do with any of that kind of stuff. But anyway, my dad used to say, um, he used to tell me everything about his family, you know, because my, my family, according to my father owned some land. Okay. My, I don't know if it belonged to my granddad or his, or his dad, or I'm not sure. But in that generation of my father, in that lineage of my father, they, they did own land, by the way. You know, as many other black Americans, you know, have had land, whether it's small or large, it was irrelevant. It belonged to them. They were able to provide for their families with that land. Okay. And they, I mean... Again, and all that stuff is, you know, if, if, it, if, if you can't get it out of the, your, 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 your ancestors or your, your, your you know, your uh, ancestors that are alive now, it, 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 chances are you won't find it in any, any other place. Because again, those things have been um, intentionally, in my opinion, uh, destroyed uh, and, and, you know, taken to parts unknown, more so destroyed in my opinion. So he did tell me that they did have some land, you know, a, a, you know, a su substantial piece of land where all of them, because they come from a big family, all of them were working on that land. They were working on that land, providing for their families, because you know, like I said, we were big. They were a big family, so they were all providing for each other. You know, they had all the fruits and vegetables they needed on this particular land, and everything else required to sustain themselves and provide for themselves and be responsible. But, oh, lo and behold, because I don't know if it was due to lack of education or just due to lack of understanding or just being naive, 
and being manipulated and not understanding that sometimes a man's word means absolutely nothing. Okay, someone can promise something and it means absolutely nothing. We're constantly breaking, breaking our promises and lying to people and being deceptive. Is that why we have spam now? Can you understand why we have spam? Okay. And uh, uh, all these other uh, uh, fraudulent means to take money, uh, to take from people. So anyway, my dad said, yes. They, you know, I remember he said to me, he says, yes, they had some land, enough to sustain them. We could have had that land. My siblings, my cousins, my uncle, all of us could have had that land to sustain ourselves, provide for ourselves, provide for our family and children and blah, blah, blah. The list could have gone on and on and on. Uh, you know, and, do the, and, and, and my father told me or my dad, whatever, you know, people say their father, or their dad, I call them both. Like I said, he was a brilliant man. But what he did tell us, because I listened to him, I don't know if my brothers did, you know, sometimes we just don't listen. You know, and that's, that's to our own fault, actually. And we just don't pay attention. We don't ask the right questions of people. He did say that um, the land was stolen via some type of fraudulent uh, warranty deed scam that happened to so many black people back in the day, so many black Americans back in the day, where, you know, these had, you had these, um, these uh, salespeople who, you know, who came from all walks of life, okay? They usually were white males, okay? They usually displayed themselves as a religious as religious men, you know, and and um, and taking advantage of uh, a lack of uh, knowledge about documents, legal documents and such. And so I, I, so I can remember my dad used to say, always hide your warranty deed, hide your warranty deed. And I used to wonder, well, why is he saying that? And then, like I said, one day I, I finally asked, what does he mean? I, you know, because I was doing some paperwork for him because he had to stop. He had to stop going to school because he he was supposed to take care of that land. You know, that's why they had to get out of school because they could take care of the land and continue to provide for the family. You know, have food and vegetables and stuff for them to 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 to, to you know, be accountable and responsible for their livelihood. And then he said, um, uh, you know, these are uh, these white males in business suits claiming to be of a Christian faith came in and somehow uh, forced one of our relatives, I can't remember which one, to sign a document turning that land over to them turning that land over to these white males in the, in the business suits, you know, so-called Christians is what they, that's what my dad said. They were labeling themselves and they took advantage of the fact that, um, uh, my ancestors did not understand the legal ramifications of things. And they thought they were signing this and they were actually signing that. And I do remember something about my grandfather's hands. I do remember something about his hands. That they had, they had an unusual um, injury to his hands, which looked like torture to me. You know, because I remember one finger bent, you know, like the baby finger, and it was bent at a certain angle that looked unnatural to me. Now he said it was from some type of a farming equipment, but I don't know. You know, and every time I would, I remember I used to, you know, because I used to ask a lot of questions, and I used to get in trouble for that too just crazy but you know why I was getting in trouble is because people didn't have answers and nobody wanted to say I don't know I don't know and th and that that means that that would display their ignorance so a lot of people don't want to say I don't know I don't know because everybody wants to be right they want to say they know everything so I remember he had some unusual injuries to his hand that looked like torture to me I don't know how any equipment could have caused it, but that's possible. Because usually if equipment is going to cause the damage I saw on his hand, on his finger, it would have ripped that finger out of his, out of its socket. But it was like a torture injury on his finger, on his hands. Anyway, um, so when the land was stolen, um, my dad said that the new owners 
wanted them to continue to work on the land, even though it didn't even belong to them anymore. And uh, one of our relatives absolutely refused. He absolutely refused to have his sons, because they were mostly men and women, work on land that no longer belonged to them. Okay, it was stolen. And they were supposed to continue to work on that land that was stolen from them. And so I remember my dad said that he attempted to go in and talk to these people, these white male Christians in business suits, and they threatened his life. Okay, they threatened to kill him. So he backed off, of course. And I don't think he met my, I don't think he was married at the time. I can't remember. You know, if he was with my mom at the time, I, I can't remember. And I remember my dad said they threatened him and told him that they would kill him if he kept intervening to come, you know, to try to get the land back. So what my dad had to do is he had to get out because no longer he had, he no longer had any way to any, uh, substantial work because my, you know, because his family members, his elders said, no, you're not working on that property ever again. Ooh, that's all he knew is farming. So what he had to do was go out and find jobs elsewhere. And so that's when he started hustling, doing this, hustling, doing that, and, you know, attempting to provide for his family or provide for himself. And then he eventually he went on his way, you know, and ended up here and there trying to find work and income. So there's always more than meets the eye. And a lot of people wondering, thinking, okay, black people didn't care about this and black people didn't care about that. You know, the Indians, the Native Americans didn't care about this. The Native Americans didn't care about that. It's all a bunch of lies. Okay. However, unfortunately, due to our complacency, we'll, we won't find that evidence to support anything. Okay. But, but yet, at the same time, each time stuff is being taken away, taken away, taken away, and thrown onto these, um, onto the, you know, Onto the internet, onto social media, you know, in, onto parts unknown, into the cloud. Anybody ever thought, well, what was the cloud? Mm, I don't know. So anyway, so there is a cause and effect. Okay, no such thing as coincidence. Um, you know, the, the, the fact that, you know, it should be clear why the planet is, is uh, being destroyed. Because we love this, you know, certain people. Certain group of people, and now it's including all of us. We just like to take, 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 and steal, 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 and claim ownership to stump something that doesn't even belong to them. You know, at some point, people are, you know, going to be claiming ownership to to breathe in if they haven't already, and they're going to want to make the decision whether you breathe or not. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you hear me? Do you feel me? And do you see me? These are real factors to consider. And this is mostly to the young people and the descendants, you know. There's more than meets the eye, you know. You know, there are people that genuinely love this this planet and did everything in their power to protect it and, and attempt to, you know, protect it. But those those uh, those efforts were always intervening. You know, somebody always intervened in that and took it because they thought it belonged to them. And it's continuing. It's happening right below our feet. People are just stealing, taking, destroying. All right, so just think about it. Consider it. Meditate on it. Don't ruminate. Don't overthink it. Just know that, that you know, if, if, if you want to know why everything is happening as it's happening, it, 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 it does start with a cause and then an effect. Okay, and so I, all I'm saying, it, it is a lie to say that black Americans did not care about this country, did not care about this planet, that Native Americans did not love their land or love this planet it was all a lie however do you need proof of that or is the destruction of the planet enough okay peace and love